Hello, I am Zenkai from FTC Team Wolf Corp 12525. In this video, we will set up EasyOpenCV for FTC and detect sky stones from last season. EasyOpenCV is an SDK created by OpenFTC that allows FTC programmers to use cameras with OpenCV easily. First, you need to download the Skystone SDK from GitHub if you don't have it already. To set up EasyOpenCV, we just have to follow the instructions on GitHub. Let's open up the project in Android Studio. We need to add a line and build a common .gradle in the repositories block. Next, we need to add a dependency and build a .gradle in the team code module. Let's copy the dependency from the installation instructions and paste it. When you're done, do a Gradle sync to download the dependencies. While we wait, you can download the OpenCV library. And put it inside the first folder in your robot controller's uh, storage. Like so. To identify Skystones using OpenCV, we have to create an OpenCV pipeline. A pipeline basically accepts video frame from the camera, processes the frame in the process frame function, and then return an image which can be displayed on the robot controller screen. You can also add annotations like rectangles within the process frame function so you can see what the algorithm is doing. To get started, we create a class that inherits OpenCV pipeline. Let's add it to version control. Let's start with the constructor. It is fairly simple. We just need the telemetry object, which will be passed as an argument from the opmo we will create later, so that we can view information on the driver station. Then we need to override the process frame function. Now, the input matrix is a video frame we get from the camera. We want to keep the input matrix as it is, so let's create a working copy variable called mat. We need to declare it as a field, so OpenCV only need to allocate the buffer once. Here, we convert the matrix from RGB to HSV. RGB isn't so good for object detection most of the time. It is difficult to specify color ranges in RGB. You can also convert it to YUV, but here I use HSV because my camera can only detect two stones at a time at the time of the competition. You will see why later. What we want to do is detect the stones instead of the sky stones. They are easier to detect because it is unlikely that you can see the color yellow anywhere other than on the stones. For our team, our camera was constrained to the upright position, so it can only see two stones at a time. We start by defining an HSV range to identify the color yellow. The X values of the two scalars represent a range of hue, Y's values represent a range of saturation, and the Z values represent a range of values. Only if the HSV value at the hand fits within all three ranges will it be considered yellow. Next, we apply thresholding to our image using the HSV range we just created, which will show us part of the image that is yellow.
So mat is the source matrix and low HSV, high HSV are the lower and upper boundaries. And mat is reused as a destination matrix so we don't have to create another one. After thresholding, the matrix becomes a grayscale image. The regions that have colors within the HSV range will turn white, and the rest will become black. Since the robot always starts at the same position, we will know where the stones are on the image. We focus on these regions instead of the whole image. Where these regions are depends on the position of your camera, and you can determine them by drawing rectangles on the image and adjust until the rectangle fits within the stones that are on the image, which I'll demonstrate later. I had already found the regions that my phone is going to use. We can define them as rectangles so we can reuse these coordinates without having to create multiple constants. Since my phone can capture two stones at once, we only have two regions of interest, the left ROI and the right ROI. ROI is an abbreviation for regions of interest, if that was not clear to you. Now that we've defined the regions of interest, we can extract them from the image like so. Now, we check to see what percentage of the matrix became white. We can determine the percentage by adding all those pixels together, and dividing by its area, which averaged the submatrices, and then dividing everything by 255, which is the max value for a grayscale pixel. Here we take the first element of the sum result because there is only one channel in a grayscale image. After you have used the submatrices, make sure to release them. To help with debugging, you can use telemetry to display the values used in the calculation. Now we can begin identifying the stones. If the percentage of yellow is higher than some threshold, then it should be a regular stone. We can define the threshold as a constant. We say that a site has a regular stone if the percentage is higher than our threshold. Now that we have everything we need to determine the location of the sky stone, if both stones are regular, then the stone is not found. If the, if the regular stone is on the left, then the sky stone is on the right, otherwise it's on the left.
we should create a variable to store the result so that we can access it later from our upload. Um, there are only three options for the position of a sky stone left, right, or not found. And we can define an enum for that. We should use telemetry to show the location of the sky zone on the driver station. We can draw rectangles to visualize the location of the stones and the sky stone. We first convert the grayscale image back to RGB so we can draw colored rectangles. Then we we'll define two colors so that we can differentiate a stone from a sky stone on the screen. For simplicity, we will use red for a stone and green for a sky stone, which is super easy to find in RGB. The rest is simple. We draw the rectangles we defined earlier onto the matrix. We use the ternary operator here, aka a conditional expression, which is basically a mini if statement that chooses which color to use based on the location of the stone. Now that we're finished with sky stone identification, we can return the matrix which Easy Open CV will draw on the screen for us. Let's also create a getter for the private location variable. Now that we have a detector pipeline, we can use it to create an autonomous op mode. Let's add it to version control. The op mode needs to extend linear op mode. Let's call it sky stone detector. We need to declare a phone camera, which we'll initialize using sample code from the repository. Let's use alt enter to import these classes. I don't like long lines, so I will split them into multiple lines. Now we're connected to the camera. We need to declare a variable for our detector so we can call it get location later.
and we need to pass in the telemetry object. We need to set the pipeline to our detector. And start streaming asynchronously, which is the recommended way to open the camera since Easy Open CV 1.4. I'm using a lambda expression here, which is basically an anonymous function. Since we only have one statement to execute, we can even remove the curly braces around the function and the semicolon too. It looks a lot cleaner. Lambdas are a function of Java 8. To make use of that, we need to change the JDK version to 1.8. If you prefer Java 7 for some reason, you can use the verbose syntax in the example. Here. But now we're just going to change the version of JDK we're using. Also, remember to specify your camera's orientation. You can choose from these options. Once the camera starts streaming, the process frame function will be called for every new frame in the stream. Once we know the location, the robot can act accordingly. When you are done with the Skystone detection, don't forget to stop streaming so that it consumes less resources. Here's a short demonstration of the pipeline we just created. Let's pretend for now that the highlighter is the stone. As you can see, when nothing is in the frame, it assumes that the left side has a Skystone, as shown by the green and the text on the driver's station. But if I move this yellow highlighter into the green you'll know that the left side has a stone and then the right side must be the sky stone and if I move it further to the right you'll see that it thinks that both are just stones so it must be elsewhere as shown by the driver station it thinks that it's now found so our algorithm worked that's all for this tutorial I hope it was helpful to you if you have any questions, issues, or concerns, put in the comments. Check the video description for the code used in this tutorial plus some additional links. Thanks for watching.